Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Just thought I'd do a quick video. And you know, I say quick video, because some people want quick video. So we've got to try and do it quick and say that it's quick. So that we try and keep, we can only try and keep you happy. But if it's too quick, you won't really get what's going on. So this is a Hilux, Can 26 Hilux, the rear drum brakes. Some people have been asking about they want a video on these. Well, I don't do brakes on these. I stopped doing brakes on these years ago. So at the end of the day, how can I do a video on something I don't do? But our 4 before Diesel Workshop partners do brakes and axle seals and all sorts of things on these. So um, what we can do is um, basically, I can quickly run through what's going to happen here um, in the rough order that I would do it. And hopefully that'll help you if you need to change your rear drum brakes and all your axle seals and stuff like that. Now, the bearings, they need to be pressed on and off. So there's no point sort of trying to do it yourself. It's just not gonna be worth it. If you take it to a specialist that knows what they're doing, they have all the tools and equipment so they can get it done a lot more swiftly. Okay, so just in case you're not aware, that's your drum, right? That's your drum or your drum brake, right? That's the drum. And it looks a bit like a drum, doesn't it? That's maybe why it's called a drum. <laughs> right, now, these are your shoes here on the outside, right? Both sides, they're your brake shoes. Now, these little clips here, they're your retainers. They retain the brake shoes, okay? They're kind of a bit of a token gesture, really, to be honest. You could almost take those off and they wouldn't do anything because the outside of the shoe here is going to hit against the drum. Might make some noise, but... Everything else is going to be operational basically without those clips. Now, I'm not saying that you should take them off and get rid of them. I'm just trying to point out that they're not a massive component that holds it all together. What holds it all together mainly is the spring. There's some. There's a spring under there. If you, let's have a look underneath. This spring here is for the handbrake cable, so don't worry about that too much. And this spring at the bottom here, all right, this one here, is what holds the bottom end of things together. So. If I was going to remove these shoes for either uh, replacing the brake shoes or the wheel cylinders, you may do it at the same time sometimes. The way you check, let's just quickly do it. If you're checking your brakes on drum brakes, you can look through from the little spy hole on the backing plate. This is the backing plate, so in behind here, down the side and the bottom, whatever you like. There's a couple of places where you can look through. And what you're looking for is the brake shoe and how much meat's left on it. See, in this case, we've got sort of three or four millimeters. These things last ages. They do wear unevenly. Um, they really do last a long time. Now, the problem is if you go off road, you get a lot of mud, muddy water, dirt and grit and stuff like that in there. You could wear them down quickly and sometimes they need regular adjustment. So my recommendations are if you're checking the brakes for one of these that stays on the road, you can look through the hole, but every now and then, at least at the major service, you should take the wheels and drums off and do an inspection. Now, what I used to do, a lot of places, what they would do, this would all covered in dirt and dust normally, and they would still go ahead and open up these boots and have a look in there like that. And it was all messy and dirty, and I didn't really like it. But in this case, because these guys, they do things clean, everything's been cleaned up. So I'll show you what I used to do. I used to prefer, if you had a problem, you could just go, like kind of like that and give it a squeeze because you'd feel the you'd see the fluid and the pressure in there and if it's leaking out if they're leaking you know you press that and it kind of like leaks out and you'll see the mess everywhere anyway so in this case though because uh, it's clean we'll just go yep no fluid there leaking out there that's just the dust boot of course you check each side because the seals at each side are independent so we'll just check yep yeah, nothing there right so we've just checked our wheel cylinders make sure it's all clean before you do that and all the boots go back on properly happy days Happy days, there you go. I haven't used that one for a while, have I? Happy days, it's all happy days here. Um, so that's checking the wheel cylinders, checking the meat on the shoes, right? There's enough there, that's cool. So let's just pretend there wasn't and we have to change and what do we do? This is a pretty complex setup. So for the sake of safety, you should probably take the vehicle to someone that knows what they're doing because when it comes to brakes, it's a matter of life and death. So I'm gonna give you some tips and information here because it's gonna be helpful and Unfortunately, there's a lot of people working in the automotive trade that it's probably safer for you to do your brakes yourself than it is taking it to them, unfortunately. So that doesn't mean everywhere is um, average, 
but you've just really got, as I keep saying, you gotta be careful where you go. So, okay, we're gonna take these shoes off. What would I do? Mm, okay, because there's no set course of action here. What would I do? I would take the bottom spring off. So I'd come down here and what I use here is um, side cutters um, to grab, and this might sound dodgy, but everybody's got their own way. Oh my God, and there's the phone ringing. I can't believe it, hang on a sec. Here we go. Um, hang on a sec. Hang on, guys. Hello, how are you going? Good, good. You're in a video at the moment. I'm making a video. Talk to me. <laughs> yep. Sorry, no, just that one. That's it. Making a video. In a workshop. At a 4v4 Diesel workshop partner. Can I ring you back? Is it anything urgent or? Nah, it's fine, no dramas. All right, thanks, love you, see ya, bye. Okay guys, that was the missus, you know, and when the missus calls, she doesn't bug me too much, but when she calls, we've got to answer the phone. So we did it, and we did it live, and we leave it in the video, because we don't muck around, you know? At least I got it done quickly, right? So. Where were we? Now down the bottom here, everyone's different with brakes, how they do things, right? But I'm gonna tell you a quick story and I may have mentioned in other videos, when I was a first year apprentice working at a very big dealership, the brake specialist we dealt with um, in Box Hill, um, this guy, this old guy used to come and do some deliveries every now and then and he was watching me do some brum, drum brakes once when I was a first year and he said, what are you doing? Stop doing that, get out the way. And he saw that I'm sitting there on the tire and he pushed me out of the way. We were working on the ground back in those days. Pushed me out of the way and he grabbed the tools. He said, get me this and get me that, you know what I mean? And you just shut up and do as you're told, the respect thing, you know, he's, he's been done it for decades. A bit like, oh, I suppose he's, he probably did more than I've done because of that generation. It was more drum brakes. I've done a lot of drum brakes, but obviously a lot more pads than um, drums. So he shoved me out of the way and he grabbed the tools and he showed me how it was done. And, I reckon in a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, the job was done. So this is what I learnt, side cutters. Now we're not cutting things, but side cutters, because they're sharp, I use the Sid Chrome ones were the best ones for me. I uh, got a pair a couple of decades ago and they're still going strong. I would carefully grab and grip that spring right there and I would pull stretching this spring that way and, un and that unhook that spring from there. That would come off. Then next I would remove this clip here. All right, so that clip there which would be done probably using side cutters as well. I'd probably grab it around here inside, you know, you could get the tip inside that clip there, spin it around. I wish I had like four hands and I'd just do it for you now. Then I'd come around, pop this clip off. Then there's not a lot holding things here because you've got your clips allowing things to move towards you. One of your springs is off. Then the next thing is this bigger spring in here, okay? So you'd back off your adjustment to make things easier. You wheel cylinder, you don't have to worry about too much. Just don't let anyone pump the brake pedal while the um, while the shoes are off, is the main thing. Um, so then, yeah, remove your big spring up here. And then once that's removed, the shoes will sort of just come apart. Your adjuster, there's another spring here actually. So you could actually, you could unhook that if you like. You could unhook it here at the bottom, right? So take note of which way it goes. The spring's facing back towards me. So it hooks in from behind, right? I'll try and, should have turned the light on, but I didn't, but anyway. Um, take note, the little, this sits on the dowel there, right, so just take note of everything. Once you take all these bits and pieces off and get your springs off, basically, it's pretty straightforward. Everything's going to fall out and you're probably going to go, wow, that's a lot of bits and pieces. Not really, it's just a shoe on the right, a shoe on the left, a clip on the left, a clip on the right, the little spring underneath, that spring goes there. Take some photos if you need to. Um, what I do, I'll, I'll take it off. So basically once you've taken that off, lay each component as it comes off on the ground, then your right shoe is gonna come off first, lay it on the ground, and then your left shoe, because you've got your handbrake here. Again, the side cutters go in between the spring there, and you sort of push the spring away from the steel here, and you squeeze through the spring with your side cutters, but not cutting the cable, but enough to then get a grip, just enough to get a grip on the cable, after you've pushed the spring, grip on it, and then you'll be able to unhook the cable out of this adjuster there, and then you'll just sort of, you might have to twist it around, drop it down, whatever the case may be, and unhook the end of that cable from the handbrake arrangement at that side there, and then that shoe's removed. And then basically all you're left with is 
your wheel cylinder, which you may or may not be changing, in this case you wouldn't be. Some people do a panic thing and they get wire and they wire up around the wheel cylinder to stop the pistons coming out and whatever, but the fact of the matter is they're not coming out, nothing's gonna push them out, they're not gonna fall out. The same way as fluid pushes them out, it holds them in also, right? So they may move out a little bit, but then the fluid will fill up behind them and the reservoir will go down. And then when you put the shoes back, it'll push these pistons back in again. If this is starting to sound too technical for you and too many things can go wrong, don't touch it, okay? Take it to someone that knows what they're doing. Um, and then obviously getting the axle out, it's another story. It's always advisable to drain your diff oil so that once you get the axle out, the oil's not leaking out everywhere because you'll find that to be a real pain if you don't do that. And then if you look behind here, look, you may as well, if you're gonna do the axle, you don't have to. Well, no, you do actually. You gotta take off the wheel cylinder. You've gotta take off the brake line. Cap the brake line's best because you haven't got a flexible hose here. It's just steel. So you're gonna to need to have some caps ready. Um, and you've got your nuts behind there, which you can't see, it's a bit dark, but I'm sure when you go look at your car, and always advise taking the ABS plug and the ABS sensors out first, just as a good habit, because on some vehicles, the sensor can hit when things are coming out. So, bada bing, bada boom, that is how you would remove it. Let's have a look at the other side and see what's going on there. For those of you that stuck around, this is Action City. We're gonna see how fast or how slow Okay, that's that adjuster and adjusting spring off. The bottom spring's already been removed. If you miss that, you blinked. Right, so the bottom spring's off. Clip. Don't go too far. Slow and gently does it. <laughs> right, there's a clip and the pin at the back. That's it, laying it nice and there. Always put it left and right, exactly how it comes off, that way you don't have to think because with these drum brakes, every vehicle's different. I've got to say, I used to love um, like the, the rear of the, uh, or the cars that haven't got the handbrake in there. They're just shoes, there's no handbrake. Um, this one can sometimes go flying on you. Mm. Be careful. See ya. Any of these clips can go flying, guys. So this is a Hilux. This may or may not be beneficial to you. This could cause more problems for you. You may wish you never touched it. Have I told you enough times? A matter of safety. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it. This is, I suppose, to help someone that insisted on doing it and then they can't find where all the bits go. You're gonna back off that adjuster, right? Huh? Going the right way or the wrong way? Oh, right, right. You start to wonder sometimes, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You'd think you're going the right way because you're going the blunt way. Mm. <clears throat> it's actually designed to go the other way, right? Because it's designed to automatically adjust, right? Which works sometimes. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's what I was going to say with these Hiluxes. It's advisable if you take it out and park it in bog holes that. When you come home, you jack it up, you take the wheels and drums off and wash all the mud out because, and you probably need to give this wheel a couple of clicks because as I said, it acts like sandpaper wearing these shoes down and that's where your hand brake becomes loose. And it's got a bit of a joke that's not a joke, that ad on TV where the Hilux rolls off the cliff, do you remember? You've seen that one, haven't you? Yeah. You've seen that one, Johnny? It was a while back. And um, you kind of laugh and the funniest part is, because it's a, a known problem that the Hilux handbrakes, you know, like, you know, the handbrakes, they don't hold very well, you know? Mm. So it's kind of like, oh, good, ad, good one, Toyota, yeah, you're right, you know, your handbrakes don't work, you know? And I don't think it's gonna be down the bottom on the beach next time you go down there the way the ad goes, but mm. how fitting that, uh, I'm trying to get as much information here, guys, and show you what's going on without getting in his way. That's why these jobs are very difficult. He's got a crook hand at the moment too. Things are not working too well. So. Tick, 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 tick. Three minutes, mate. That should be off now. <laughs> now, guys, look. Some, you know, some of the people I used to work with, they would take uh, half an hour to get them apart and about three hours to get it back together, you know? Mm. I think half of the three hours was them coming, can you help me with this? Mm. Can you help me with this? You know what? I've got my own jobs to do over here. Mm. 
happy babies, you know, I can't help them the whole time. <laughs> anyway, get out of those places. And this is what you guys have got to deal with, unfortunately. There is some good guys out there, absolutely. You can say get out the way. Get, get out of there, would you? Get out the way. That big spring's always the one that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you're trying to push it and the shoe's moving backwards. So if you had a helper to hold the shoe in really hard while you pushed against the spring, mm. that would help. But don't slip and stab him. This is where I use the side cutters. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it, on these ones, it is hard to get in there because of the axle. That's what I was saying. Mm. Some of the little four-cylinder cars, you know, that they had really small shoes. It was so simple. I could change a set of shoes, I reckon, in about three minutes, yeah. literally off and on. Check the wheel cylinders, yep, no worries, bang, shoes, drum off. Um, small, you know, the, the face of the axle here was mm. small. There was plenty of room to get in there. Got a problem with your hand, huh? Yeah, You're just making excuses for the video, yeah. mate, why it's taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. Uh, no, here we go, what's going on here? Um, another way to do that. Other, you know, I'm just putting ideas out there. Other ways I've done it is to put the screwdriver underneath the spring in the hole and leave it, get the screwdriver on the flat part on the end of the spring like that, so the spring slips on the screwdriver that way. Um, not the greatest idea either, you know, but it's just another idea that works sometimes. Off you. It's very strong. you can try, you can try it, but you need someone pushing the shoe or yourself pushing the shoe. Mm. If you can get a good grip on that and pull it, but the problem you got is the whole thing goes with it. Yeah. Mm. Another way I'm used to this, I can just take the whole thing. Yes, that's right, yeah, yeah, that's it. Alright, and then. Uh, yeah, you can lift the whole thing off the top, out the top that way. And then allow the shoe to come in and the spring's no longer got the pressure on it. And remember how you got it off because it's often the best way to get it back on. Yeah. Yeah, you get the adjuster out, that's it. Beautiful, careful to boot on that. Um, yeah. Nicely done, adjuster comes out. And then easily that spring hooks off. So let's remember guys, Right, that was a good way to do it. There's lots of different ways to do this, right? If you want to know the factory way, if you want to know how the book says, you go and read the book. We don't do books, we do videos. All right. See what I said about this coming out, right? right. Now they'll move left to right. You can see this side moving out when I push it in. And if I push this side, right, yeah, it moves a little bit anyway. All right. Right, see what's going on, but it doesn't mean there's a problem and it doesn't mean you need to bleed your brakes, but bleed your brakes anyway because brake fluid's hygroscopic and that's in another video. Change it every couple of years. Yeah. Alright, which side do you want me to get out of the way did you say? Move! <laughs> <laughs> that could stay there, when it comes out we'll come up together. Mm. You need really good pliers. Yeah, that's like why, my nipex. That's why you use side cutters, because you know they grip, because you've got that point there, yeah? It doesn't yeah. cut anything. You know, some people don't like that. Yeah. It didn't seem right to me when uh, what was the guy's name again? Mick. When Mick taught me that, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but you know what? Did it for decades afterwards and mm. bada bing, there you go. Hang on, what's that spring? Where did that come from? Oh that's right, that was that oh, spring. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it goes in that hole there like that. Mm -hmm. you sure it doesn't go in the other hole? This hole? No, or the oh, other hole. There's one? lots of holes there. How do you know which hole it goes in? Let's because have a look behind the shoe and make sure we're telling everybody the right hole. Because that part there, there's got to be some sort of clearance for it to go across. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I wasn't looking, to be honest. Yeah. So, so I say right. let's have a look behind the shoe. Mm. Because, you know, it's easy enough to pull it apart, but I haven't done these for years. Mm. And I'm not doing any more ever, guys. <laughs> Everyone listening? Not doing, right, so there's a bit of fluid coming out of that wheel cylinder now, right, so. And if you, if you have a look at the opposite shoe, 
Mm -hmm. Alright, he's got the same slot too. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah, both. This, this is the problem. Both the shoes are a bit dark there, but both the shoes are exactly the same you'll find on most brake shoes. Um, so you can actually swap them around. You can even take that handbrake thing off that one and fit it onto this one. So let me just have a look and correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think I'm wrong this time. Let me see. Uh, yeah, that one hasn't got the hole at the bottom. This one's got. So on these ones. There is a left, oh no, that's, I'm looking at the top and the bottom. Yeah, no, 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 same, same, yeah. yeah it's got the hole, I'm looking at the hole at the bottom here, oh, at the okay. bottom of that one. To compare to the bottom of this one. They're mirror, they're exactly identically the same. Mm. So what I said here, my way is the uh, side cutters, if you can, you know, you get in Suppose the spring. It, like that. You need to get, get a little, fitness. cut the cable, you need to pull and, and then, then just give it a gentle, you'll see how well they grip, gentle squeeze there, yeah, that's it. Because my hand is sore, yeah. I'll push it with my thumb. That's it, you can bring it back and unhook it from there, without letting that cable slip, without damaging the cable whatsoever, it's just enough to grip. Two, that's it, beautiful, nicely done. So there it is guys, all the shoes are off. And obviously to remove the axle, the whole backing plate comes out with it, by as we said. Around the back here, you just leave the wheel cylinder on there, disconnect the brake line, wheel cylinder mm. can stay there. Yep. Anyway, we need to take a break. Right, so this is over the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, always better to say passenger than left or right, because it depends if you look at it from the front or the back, really. It is not that confusing. Look at it from the back, I reckon, face which way you're going, but you could be standing at the front going, oh yeah. So anyway, passenger side, driver side, guys. Um, there's a new seal in there. Hey, excuse me, can you make a bit less, no, ignore me, but can you make a bit less noise? We're trying to, you know, explain something over here. Right, so over here, the axle seal has been replaced. There's a nice new one in there, ready to go. And the bearing has been replaced, right? That's the part that I really don't think you're going to be able to do yourself. You need some special tools and equipment and presses and stuff like that. Um, but it's all been replaced and professionally pressed on this time. Look at that, beautiful. And it's about to go back in. All right, so the wheel cylinder is mounted on the backing plate still. Carefully going in there without touching that seal. Nicely done. And here you can see that cap on the brake line, what we're talking about. Sorry about the lighting situation, guys, but you know what? That's good enough. Is, it, you know, is that a new O-ring or has it been lubed up or is it nice and soft and you're reusing it? What's it's a new one. There? New nice one? Nice and new, beautiful. Wheel cylinder still mounted on the backing plate here. The, blokes will, these, the brakes will need to be bled for this job definitely. So sometimes you get away without bleeding them with the, um, you know. So anyway guys, you need to get that in, um, once you get that in place, and bolt it back up again. So they say Johnny's good at finding holes, and he got it in. So I just wanted to show you there that it's in place. Just get those nuts back on, and that's what retains it in. Bada bing, that's what holds it in, right? So yeah, check that out. Getting these bolts undone, the nuts I should say, not bolts at the back. As I said, sensors out of the way. Doing your knuckles, doing your head in, doing your hands in. There you go, beautiful. How tight do you reckon they are? Know, Just yeah. nicely, yeah? yeah? Just nice, yeah. It's not the sort of thing I'd worry about a torque specification on, you know? Yeah. Just nice how it was, mate, you know? We get on the technical things with numbers, but when it comes to suspension components, retaining that axle, I'll take a guess. I've got no idea what it is, I'm gonna take a guess. I reckon they'd be around the what? 60 maybe? Not as high as 60, could be lower, could be higher. I don't think going up to 80 would hurt it, and I don't think going below 50 would, uh, you know, mm. be somewhere in that range. Mm. You guys watching this, you can look it up and let me know in the comments what is the torque specification for the retaining the axle into the dip housing times four, right, in Newton meters, and we'll see how good or bad my reverse engineering was. Stuff. There we go, looks like the uh, brake fluid's getting reconnected here. About to get reconnected, the cap's off, about to go back into the back of the wheel cylinder. The nuts are on, it's all sitting nice and flush, beautiful. 
Come back together, butter bing. Oh. Coming apart. This one. So what is it? A race to get this one apart before he gets the other one back together? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Getting those nuts off. Is the brake line off already, yeah? Not yet. That's not okay. So the nuts off and then the brake line and then off she comes. Mm -hmm. So it's going back together. Hey, have you taken my 10 mil? Of course I did, mate. Hey, return them, mate. I need it. Oh, here you go, cry back. Yeah, that you've given the 10 mil back here, yeah, getting the thing out. Look at this, right? So this is, right, see, brake line off, capped up. Yeah, oh, wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. Mmm, nice. Um, nuts, seal, bada bing, bit of bada bing, bada boom. All right. Love to watch you pull that out, mate. Okay. Might be this side if you want to swing over this side. Oh, I'm in your way again. No, I just want to swap hammer, so left mm. hand. So, because I'm going to put in a new seal oh, on this. I'm not going to worry too much about the inner seal. This gentleman is very fastidious with his high lux. Even mm, though all here, mate. That's how they are people wrong. No, even though they everything still seems to be okay, he wants to do preventative maintenance. Mm. And then just put this on the ground, let it rest for a moment. Mm. You're uh, doing up those nuts to that retain the um, axle, yeah. Oh, that right. 14 mil, yeah. Yes. 14 mil. Nice. Alright. Special tool guys. Special tool. Watch and see. This is the sort of thing you need. Here we're with an engineer. So not only does he fix cars, he can make cars. And other things, including <laughs> tools to fix cars. So... It needs a coat of paint though, you know. It looks like you've been keeping busy. Yeah. And haven't had a chance since the tool was built to give it a good coat of paint. There's a thing called a hammer. I know. If you do need to whack it, whack it on use, here. I don't use hammers. I whack, whack, it, whack it with everything but the hammer. I whack it with impact driver. I whack it with the, uh, yeah. Got the same problem. Where's my hammer? Where's Mr. Johnny left my hammer? He's stolen your hammer too, has he? Mm. Oh, God. Guys, places to be, people to see. Um, as you can see, it's quite time consuming to make videos. So we give you what information we can when we can. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you'll see the next videos. And if you didn't quite get the reassembly on this one, may not be on this vehicle, but there'll be a reassembly video again, either on this vehicle or on another one. Thanks for watching. Be looking in the comments for those comments that I mentioned earlier. Whatever, whatever. Bada bing, bada boom. Gotta go. See ya.